Hi, everybody. Hello. So we can see Katie. So that's mean that somebody at least can hear us. There is, oh, 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 it has an old message in the chat. Can you hear us? See us, hear us. Okay. When nobody answers, <laughs> we just get worried. So <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is, that is, okay. So seriously? Okay. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, at least you can hear us. So let's start with our usual introduction. So let me share the screen. Yep. Okay, Isaline. Hi, everybody, and welcome to SEO Nerd Switzerland. Um, this is a meetup meant to share knowledge about SEO and also opinions and ideas, and really a place where you can pitch your ideas if you ever want to come talk. And so we are a nonprofit association. Saha and I have started that in 2019, I think. Um, so it has been arrived already with COVID and everything. We are really happy to be back here tonight. And we have two sponsors to help us um, play the game. Obviously, we have a couple of costs uh, about the you know, softwares and transcript and this kind of stuff. So we are very lucky to count as sponsor Leap. It's a um, web agency based in Switzerland. And, you know, it has won awards and blah, blah, blah. And I think they are probably hiring. So they would probably be happy that I say they're hiring. So do check it out. <laughs> and we have another sponsor, which is Working SEO. Working SEO is a podcast and a job board. The podcast is about sharing stories to help you um, navigate your career if you are starting or if you are pivoting to SEO. And we have a new season coming up at the moment. So do check it out. I've just shared the link in the, um, in the chat. And also there is a... Um, a job opening if you are located in Switzerland and you're interested. So that again, it's really good if you click on the link. It helps us very much with our sponsors. And um, I think that's it for the for the promotional part. Um, oh yeah, another promotional thing. The next um, session we have, the next meetup is about another very important topic, which is accessibility. And we have a knowledgeable speaker, which I'm very much looking forward to um, meeting and having for this meetup. Let me share the link so you can subscribe. Here, it's in June. So do uh, come meet Billy in June about accessibility and SEO. That's going to be awesome too. Little known fact, uh, Billy knows a lot about dinosaurs. So if you have, you know, dinosaur questions, you want to love at her, go for it. So, so I know uh, that, uh, wait, why I can't stop sharing? <laughs> That's funny. Why? Why I can't stop sharing? Okay, so we will figure out that soon why I can't stop sharing. But uh, uh, yeah, but okay. Ah, I did. So, <laughs> but yes, I remember. Road. I remember a message between you and Billy saying, "Oh, funny! Two passionate of dinosaurs are coming to uh, <laughs> to And I was like, "Really?" Connection. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you have any dinosaur knowledge to share in the chat, I I am happy to receive it. <laughs> so one thing that we have learned about Miriam today is she loves dinosaur. What else can we say about you? So uh, as you probably know it, she's smart. That's obvious. I mean, we invite her here, so we know that she's smart. She's an SEO specialist, and I would like 
Uh, she will explain a little bit more about that later on. Uh, you will see in the slide, so it's quite interesting. She has like 15 years of experience. Tell me if I'm correct, yes or no? Yes. Uh, as you probably realize it, she has a good energy. She's uh, have a nice humor. I've read like uh, your um, uh, your website. I don't know if Isaline already shared it or can share it. I don't know. So uh, and, and there you will see a bit of Miriam humor, which is a perfect combination humor um, experience. You make it, you make it great. Then uh, uh, what can I say about you? I remember that um, we spoke and you were in Berlin and you were moving to Munich, if I'm not wrong. So you are a digital nomad. That's like quite cool. Everybody would like to be one. So quite cool. She's a real one. Huh? And uh, um, in the website, I discovered that you also speak Hungarian, not just French and English. And I was like, what's the story yes. behind that? So I don't know if there is a story if you want to share it or you want to start with your presentation. I can start with my presentation because the Hungarian bit is going to show up. So Oh, perfect. Yes. Just let me explain how this will go and then you will share your presentation and then we will discover more about the story of Hungarian. So as you uh, probably know, uh, just uh, you can ask a question at the end of the presentation and Miriam will answer, you have directly, you can click on the ask a question or you can write it on the chat if you are more comfortable and we will be happy uh, to pick up the questions. So, okay, Miriam, the stage so, is all yours. Let me take over. If for some reason I speak too fast or I talk about something that you have never heard about or an acronym hesitate to ask in the chat that's the point of this type of communication huh so this talk in a nutshell for the past 15 years i have been an seo specialist i was introduced as an seo specialist and not an expert why after 15 years i think i can call myself an expert but in french a specialist is gender neutral and an SEO expert, so un expert SEO, well, it has a lot more search volume. People look for this a lot more than a specialist. But as a female, so as a woman, I can't talk about myself as an expert because that wouldn't require an extra E, une experte SEO. It's the feminine in French, which has the lowest search volume of them all. And when I say lowest search volume of them all, I mean rock bottom. So what is a smart SEO to do? Go with a gender neutral option. There's more people searching for it. And this is a bit of a problem, but it's one that we can all think about because it's, it's coming to term. I don't know if it'll be solved, but algorithms are smart enough to adapt to changing societal norms. So this brings about the question of inclusive writing. Inclusive writing is all kinds of practices of style that we use to make sure that readers feel included. It doesn't matter if it's a question of gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, everybody's welcome. Today, we're going to be looking into some of the things that happen in search engine result pages when it comes to the male, female, non-binary tensions that we have, like not tensions, but topics when it comes to content that we have. In many languages other than English, it's really hard to represent a gender neutral term and it doesn't help us get more visibility at all. So by inclusive language, we mean something that is actually free from words or phrases that are stereotyped or discriminatory. And when we discriminate, it's not always for bad reasons. Most of us have biases baked into the way we see the world, talk about it, analyze it. So today I just want to consider inclusive writing in terms of the masculine no longer trumping the feminine, just being able to evolve without these constraints that are hidden, baked in. It's making sure that everyone feels included when they read whatever you write online. But that's a battle and a half. 
despite the fact that it's one of the three values of Google. Respect the user. Like it doesn't say respect the ladies, respect the gentleman, it just says the user. So Google themselves, and it's not themselves, a lot of people working for Google have considered this. And the official outcome is Google has to adjust to some changes in copy aimed at making content more inclusive. That's the conclusion. They want to adapt. Okay. And this was discussed in a video. Um, well, it's more of a, a podcast, but this is a YouTube format that I can include in my slides. So you can watch this or listen to it later. This was discussed at length in a search of the record episode, inclusive language. And the reality is each language is different and gender neutral writing is handled differently as um, a well, as a conclusion, it, it just makes sense. So if I wanted to talk about somebody who is non-binary in English, it's much easier than it is in French. We have to do like little linguistic sidesteps sometimes and figure things out. And it's not as easy as it is with English. In many languages like French, the masculine form is the default expression in any context. We were discussing this um, prior to this presentation. Gmail drives me up the wall. I can talk to another woman for an entire thread and still have autocorrect going, the woman version of this job is not valid. You should talk as if you were a man. You do not exist in your current configuration. We don't like it. My gender keeps being autocorrected. I'm not alone. <laughs> so this brings about another question. How should Google work in theory? if we use inclusive language. So if you decide to use inclusive language, no matter what form it takes in your own language that you're dealing with, how should it work in theory? When theory, search engines should automatically be able to use the different common forms of inclusive writing that they find on a website, AKA they should adapt. The goal should be that these pages are automatically processed and accessible for any searches that are related to that. AKA you should be legible for male, female, non-binary, anything that is tied to whatever entity you want to talk about. So this means that in theory, if I wanted to call myself an SEO expert, but as a female in French, une experte SEO, I should have the potential to show up for the male equivalent, un expert SEO. And if I wanted to write inclusively, so this is something that varies country by country, but in some Francophone countries, what they do is like they tell you, you put the male, so un, one, a, and then you add a dot and you add the e for female. So it's inclusive because you're making it known with that dot. Could be male, could be female, including everyone on the spectrum. So technically, I could also write this way and have expert and dot e. So just to say male, female, same battle, I'm inclusive. And this should also show up and have a chance to position itself for the query expert, SEO, SEO expert. And that's the theory. What is the practice today? Well, Google witnessed an increase in use especially in French, because some countries have made this a best practice to use that special character, the dot. So it's called in French with the accent, le point médian. Fantastic. You can actually find that dot on your Google uh, Gboard on your phone. You press the, the dot key and you have it. Okay. It, it will pop up. Okay. Awesome. But what happens with SEO? Well, it's a bit murkier huh? because search engines are neutral. They're like, we advise you, we notice that you have increased um, content output in inclusive writing. Okay, cool. So this way of proceeding to include more people in copy is accepted in Quebec. It's accepted in Switzerland, but not in France. Like that's literally been banned. It is not a recommended practice to have inclusive writing in French from France. So I'm talking to you in Switzerland. It's used by 
major companies like the national television, but next door, it's actually not legal. They're not recommending it. They're trying to fight it. So the issue we have right now is that we have people saying, we will react to whatever you want. We notice some things in theory should work this way. And then we have the legal framework and we have the in practice framework. What do we do? So like I said, some governments have decided to ban inclusive writing altogether. So I don't know about other countries necessarily, but the one I hail from, not the one I live in, um, has decided to ban inclusive writing. The Académie Française, the official watchdog, decided that this could potentially be an aberration that is a mortal threat to the French language for future generations to come. Like, this is not a one-time threat. This is like long-term legacy, your grandchildren, my grandchildren, anybody's grandchildren. So from what I can understand, in the name of preserving the sacrosanct French language, the way it's supposed to be, we are supposed to defile gender equality, non-binary folks, look at Switzerland and go, you're doing it wrong. Look at Quebec and tell them you're doing it wrong because a watchdog somewhere knows best. Okay. Okay. But theory and practice are not the same thing on top of it all. So you're dealing with all of these questions. And it's been said officially, Google does automatically kind of expand the query that we see based on known synonyms, abbreviations, different versions of different words. And in practice, this is supposed to be automatic. So why have I spent 15 years dealing with this? Because it's still a problem to this day, because theory and practice are not the same. In some Latin languages, feminization of exclusively male job titles is encouraged instead of being inclusive. It's like, just make it feminine. And the results are truly abominable when it comes to online visibility for women and non-binary folks that, you know, want to straddle these lines and go, I, I don't necessarily have to identify with the male version or the female version. Let me find something that I can default to. And I do mean abominable. I spent 15 years being a specialist and not calling myself an expert because I couldn't. You know when I started calling myself an expert in French? When my partner joined my agency and he happens to be a dude. And then when you add a dude to the mix, this magical thing happens in SEO where you get to use all the male keywords that have high volume. Because if you add a man and a woman, then in French, it defaults to the man. So now we are plural. Expert SEO. Great. Great. So I just had to wait for a man to enter my business and somehow I get more visibility. I wish I could tell you that this is just an SEO problem, but it's not. Um, I do have my partner's signature in my emails and I do not hesitate to use it. I use his signature and his email because for some reason, some people prefer to receive an email with directives from a man. It's not just search engines. They're reflecting how a portion of the population feels. And the solutions that are given by that portion of the population are not adequate. Because entities and gender are not mixing very well. For some entities, the gender may also play a role. And if you're wondering what is an entity, well, we talk about these a lot in SEO. It's the whole shebang. It's the whole enchilada. It's the whole concept of a thing. So if you're thinking that, you know, an SEO expert is basically this entire thing that does not include women or non-binary folks that don't want to use a male um, descriptive of what they do, good luck. Because it comes from the knowledge graph. So that means that it's built automatically based on the content that Google finds online. So it's kind of like a chicken and an egg problem. Do I start writing inclusively and I don't know what the right way is to do it because I want to 
give feedback to the algorithm, like this is the way society is going and this is how we're going to reach more folks and I expect you to work the proper way, the way you promised, aka I'm included no matter what and I get my visibility. Or do we go with the good old safe masculine? Or do we try to do like this weird thing where we include some feminine keywords, so masculine keywords and we stay away from inclusive writing? It's a bit of a mess but I'm not necessarily here to give all the answers. I can give some really good ones to specific cases, but I'm here to talk about that whole um, entities and gender. Nurses versus doctors. So we want to make sure that all our users are represented regardless of their gender, their sexual orientation, or even the beliefs. And gender bias has always been a very, very strong concern for us. And I'm reading this, I'm like, that sounds good. I wish it just wasn't word salad. I wish it was meant in practice because to this day, there's still some things that just don't work. Why, why is it that when I type nurses, well, I'm going to have more women showing up and doctors less. What about lawyers? I mean, a male lawyer in France, in Google Trends, it's understood. They're like, this is a profession you're looking for. And as SEOs, we know we don't mix stuff up. Like, it understood the entity is a job. Okay. I'm looking for a female lawyer. So remember that dreadful E that keeps getting added. So avocat is a profession. Avocat is a search term. It's not a profession. Like, so that whole knowledge graph thing. Okay. I understand Google Trends. Trends have their own sources, but it's supposed to look at trends that happen in search engines. It should be understood that this is also a profession. I'm comparing things. So this brings me to yours truly. Bonjour. My name is Miriam Gessier. And if you ask me in French, I'm a specialist SEO. I am not an SEO expert. Why is that? Well, why be a specialist when you can be an expert? <laughs> it's... It's really sad. I checked myself in France, and if I wanted to be an expert, that would be fine. If I wanted to be a specialist, what's the proper term? Meh. I'm like at the bottom, but if I wanted to be an expert as a female, holy crap, if this was a heartbeat, I would declare the patient dead. This is not good. I don't have a choice. I'm left with... Do I have, choose a crappy choice or do I tell someone that I don't know how to write the French language, but that they should still hire me for their content optimization efforts? Because I'm a savvy cookie. I know when to lie about my status. So I go with epicene terms and epicene terms get better visibility than 100% of the feminine terms I checked. And it gets so demoralizing that I don't want to find the counter example because I've already looked too long. So many, many, many years of me defining myself as a specialist and not an expert has impacted how I present myself, but how I think of myself as well. And I'm kind of stuck in that limbo. I'm stuck in that epicene purgatory. Epicene is just a term that most of us have never heard of unless you're trying to find some non-gendered way out of this hell <laughs> that's it and the non-gendered way out of this hell is purgatory it's the epicene purgatory this includes men women non-binary people anybody can fit in this come to the party it's a mediocre time but it's the best time you'll have if you're a female or non-binary so inclusive writing aims to allow us to have a better representation of non-binary people and women. That's it. That's the, I mean, it's not a massive threat to multi-generational -gener massive threat to the French language, as has been stated before. The goal is just to remove genders, create new inclusive words, so new words that we can use as humans to describe ourselves. And it's considered an evolution of any language, not a disrespect to the French language. And as a side note, English evolved this way for that specific reason. English was used by lower classes way back in the day, and French was the aristocratic and the nobility's, you know, way of communicating. That's why it got calcified in these 
these structures that don't necessarily reflect how society is today. English has been much more flexible because it's been used by people who broke it, rebuilt it, needed it for different things. And it has never had a watchdog going, this is a threat. No, it's just, it evolves. So as a Francophone, if, and that's also another tongue twister because as a French person, I should know this, but as a French speaker, a Francophone, because I live in places that speak French, but not the French French, I think that we, if we could learn as kids, as adults, having to learn French, that a tea kettle is feminine and a tea bag is masculine, and there's no logic to this, clearly, there's no gender signal to a tea kettle, we can make an effort to have our language reflect our actual realities. And this seems to be a bit of an issue. So how should Google work in theory if we use inclusive language based on everything that we have seen? If you search for something like Fireman, it would automatically include the different versions. I mean, they told us that in theory it does this. And that means it includes websites that mention fire women, fire person, fire men, fire human. Okay, human being dealing with fire. Let's show them all. And in practice, it's not the same. So masculine versus feminine, when I searched for terms like web editor or female web editor, the results were not quite the same. Both the male and female search had an impact. So stating that I'm looking for something feminine has an impact on search results. And the male um, search produced results that were entirely 100% just men. The female search produced both male and female results. And here's why. In some cases, it will literally tell you, here's the top three females in that field. And after that, there's like a discrete statement saying, we have included uh, results for, and then they show you the male male query, like it better. So this means that uh, as a woman who happens to be a web editor, I'm not only competing against every other woman out there, I'm actually competing against the top three women because the rest of the field is going to be just dudes. Again, like, I don't know if I communicate the so sorrow I feel when I'm like, so not only is the playing field not the same, not only is it smaller, but they found a way to make it even smaller at the end game. So even if the volume is smaller, we are going to cut some more visibility as well. And this means that, you know, if you search for a web writer, you will rank for feminine terms as well. You don't have to work, like you're part of the majority and you will also show up in minority results. And if you are in the minority, you will compete against majority results. Like you can't win. You need to further and analyze this if you want to complain about it at scale by testing multiple um, job titles. But here's an illustration. I'm looking for Redactrice Web, a female human being who happens, well, no, this is my problem with English. When I say female, in my head, I'm saying feminine, just like somebody who wants in a Latin language that differentiates to identify themselves as being a woman. So a woman who happens to write things on the web, the first results that you will get are a descriptive of the job. So a job post, what does a web copywriter do? And then the first results you see here, Jan, Um, he is a rédacteur web. He tells you, or maybe Google decided to tell you by rewriting the description. So he's telling you, I'm a dude who does this. And you have the rédactrice as the number two result in Quebec. This sucks. This just sucks. I mean, if I'm looking for a female web copywriter, my man showing up here. Jan, I know it's not your fault, but here you are. You're the first human with this job included in the search results in google.ca when I'm clearly trying to go out of my way to look for someone who isn't you. Someone who is a woman doing this job. This lady apparently is 
less of a female web copywriter than Yan could ever be. <laughs> she has to compete against Yan for feminine terms too. There's just no winning for her or some of us. That's why you can join me in the Epicene Purgatory. So how should Google work in, in theory if we use inclusive writing? So let's say that we want to give this feedback to Google. Well, someone really smart at Google said, it's our responsibility to make sure that our user, our Google users, can use any form that feels natural to them and that we will still parse and understand their content as expected. So they're telling you, they encourage you to do it. They're telling you that in theory should work. They're telling you how it should work in theory. They're reinforcing how it should work a second round by another person, but it still fails. So why does this fail? Can, is it on us to fix this by adding more inclusive writing everywhere? Well, I told you that, bonjour, moi c'est Myriam Gessier. I should also tell you, Myriam Gessier, Schmoyer Voyok. I speak Hungarian. I was raised with this language and I was told Hungarian is a little um, bit of hell if you want to learn it by someone. So be aware, it's not the hardest, but it's right up there apparently. Why am I telling you this? Well, because Hungarian is gender neutral for real, like for real, real. And I never realized how much that impacted the way I thought of myself because languages do help us build our perspective on the world, but on ourselves as well. Ő szép, ő okos, ő olvas, ő mosogat, ő épít. Okay, cool. I can read this all day. I know what it means. And it doesn't mean she is beautiful. And it doesn't mean he is clever. And it doesn't mean that he reads and she washes the dishes while he builds and she sews. It's gender neutral. Like, why is beauty tied to a woman? Why is cleverness tied to a man in Google Translate? Like, why is it doing this? Why is it making these choices when the original input is clearly not specifying gender? It has detected Hungarian properly. Why is it detecting gender this way? That's a question that I have. That's something I'm worried about. And I tried to highlight it. Like it, it's making choices. It really is. And I would not consider myself this way. Like I, I just, I don't understand why it's happening. And I double don't understand why it's happening when other places that do translation like Deep L that I love, well, if I type it in there, they decided to go for just all feminine. She's beautiful. She's smart. She reads. Like, they decided on one gender and stuck with it. They didn't have their biases. I'm not saying that, you know, every single gender neutral language needs to be translated to let's make everything female. I'm just saying that I'm curious to know why they made that choice. And it's less of a biased choice than picking and choosing the activities. So... If you want to give it a try and complain, I have included this slide so you can play around with it. But I would like to remind people that feminizing job titles doesn't really help females make any tangible headway in terms of their career. This is something super, super important that people don't understand. It leaves behind non-binary folks and it's a trick that's already been used in the 60s. Like in the 60s when women decided, hey, let's... Let, Let's, let's do this career thing for real, like for real. Well, they were not given the same job titles as men so that they could be paid less. So if you entered a factory in France in the 60s, you were an assistant, you or a secretary versus being actually a technician specialized in setting the typewriters. Because, you know, men were threatened back then and that was a good compromise. So when it comes to inclusive writing, it seems to be a better compromise. It includes more people. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be magically propulsing you to the number one results, but it means that the more and more and more it's done, more and more Google will learn to react to it and hopefully correct some of these issues that I have highlighted today. So let's figure out how to make things Better so search engines can react to these societal changes. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying that it's starting to make headway. I'm seeing more and more job posts, for example, show up with inclusive writing 
as if they were the main keyword, but there's still quite a few things that we have to teach Google so they can react to it. So make sure that everyone feels included when they read whatever you write online. I'm not saying that you have to go with inclusive writing. I'm not saying that you should use the dot or another system. I, I'm agnostic to this. What I'm hoping is that we collectively find a way to make sure that everyone feels included. And when I say everyone, that doesn't mean that you should welcome everyone in your writing. You have a specific crowd you're writing for. So if you're writing, for example, a job posting for engineers, I don't want your grandma to feel included in that job posting. But hey, we have non-binary engineers. We have female engineers. This really needs to be considered in the language that is used. The things that are described as well matter. So Thank you for coming here today and hearing me out about this. I'm hoping that there's a few questions. So I see things, I, I did not see the cat and the chat. Um, so let's get started with the questions. Thank you so much, first of all. Um, I, I just would like to point something out and maybe correct me just to make sure that I understand so then everybody can react on that and probably help to support Google and other search engine in that. So my understanding is to say, OK, how this search engine works, they're using machine learning. So if we help the machine to learn because they use search engine by using also a, a non-binary term or feminine term or new way of writing, then they will learn, then they will understand and finally there is a connection and maybe they will no more do the weird stuff than they're doing on Google Translate. So it's a bit the responsibility of SEO content writers and everybody to understand and we need to take this step for, for, for the good of the future somehow. Yes, it's teaching machines how we talk about ourselves. And the issue that I have with this is I don't want the honest to be placed on human beings to do this and then maybe Google will adjust. This needs to be done, decided, like how, how do we as a company communicate to people that we're looking for this person or that we are targeting this type of clientele, etc. And at some point, we do expect Google to catch up. But, and here's the nuance, and that's why I really wanted to, to talk about this. It's really hard to make that choice in France today because inclusive writing has been banned in schools and has been banned by that watchdog. So you have to work within the, constraint, the constraints of your own societal system, but also give that feedback to machines that they should learn. So it's a double duty. And that's where I think, um, hopefully, it's not just us giving that push, but also Google making a decision to fine tune the results as well. So it should be done, but it also should be communicated about like we decide this in our policy, like, okay, adjust, please adjust. This is not the norm. Why? Because Google will position results based on what is the most dominant paradigm in the search, then the most common one, and then the niche ones. So a few years ago, there was a wildfire uh, that we could see from Los Angeles, and I'm in Montreal. So the sun was red, the sky was red. And if you type, why is the sky red? It would tell you, sunsets are amazing. Except that this time, the dominant search was not the most common one. So this got moved to common. And the answer was, the air is toxic, stay home, because there's a fire. So it's important for us to also consider that these messages are not simply understood and parsed because Google decided to put this and understand it better. There's also the, what are people more used to and what are they looking for? And that's where inclusive writing, you, would, you, you could argue doing it is also important, but who is going to tie with an inclusive dot? that remains to be seen, that remains to be found. Like that's why they made it available in their in their keyboard. They're like, we allow you to search. But as a society, we should also wonder, okay, how are you handling it? As humans who try to do SEO, you're also wondering, okay, so my title, do I say redacteur, do I say redactrice? What do I do concretely? 
And at the end of the day, the concrete thing to do, and that's that's a bit of the crappy one, is I live in purgatory. I use epicene gender neutral words because I don't have a choice. I have to, that's as smart as I can get. That's as SEO optimized as it can go. But it should be considered, for example, I keep harping on jobs because it really drives me up the wall to see that everybody's looking for a redacteur. Well, I want to feel included too if I read this job posting. So if you can't do inclusive writing because your company doesn't allow you to, you it, for whatever reason, at least make sure that secondary keywords in there, you know that you're going to get more visibility if you're looking for someone by using the male version. But please include at least the feminine version if possible. So I'm not saying that you have to go for inclusive writing. There's still some things that you can do even if your company or your government don't want you to be as inclusive as you could be. But yeah, these, these questions are really tricky. I'm hoping yeah. that Google steps in, makes a choice and that we as a society evolve as well for hiring practices at least. Okay. Thank you so much for the answer and the clarification. I don't know if uh, you have any question. There are some important things that came out, uh, the similarity between German and French on that, which... Uh, there, is, there is a question actually. Um, so how does Google react to special characters? You know that in German, um, sometimes we use the mm -hmm. asterisk or sometimes mm -hmm. also the slash. So there's different typographical signs that are used. How, like, let's say that you use this in a title. Uh, uh, so, so how, what happens with So with actually, this? this is one of the good things about, um, the search of the record episode, um, since the search team is based in Switzerland as well, the German portion is something that is considered, at, I mean, at least the Swiss version of German. Um, but it's been stated officially by Google. And when I say officially by Google, like it's on the off the record and it's John Mueller as a human being. Um, <laughs> I hate it when people go, Google has said, no, Google doesn't have a mouth. Uh, but John has said, you, we have noticed, we have seen the slash, we have seen the stars, we have seen the dot. We accept them all. We're just waiting for everyone else to figure out what is the best practice. AKA they're saying, we are handling this. We understand the machine is not dumb. It understands like we, in terms of natural language processing, it understands that this is tied to this entity, but we're waiting to figure out what the best practice is. So the official answer Valérie is you, you should feel free to use whatever your company wants until Google tells you a few years down the line to change it all because there's this official consensus between everyone in the world. Okay, right now it's safe, but I'm just being frank with you. They don't know. Nobody knows. So use the one you feel is most often used and is becoming the best practice where you are. Yes. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is that when we start uh, copywriting, we participate to yes, the language absolutely. Growth. So for example, in, in French, in Quebec, uh, personal branding is called having a personal, une marque personnelle, but in France, it's still used like as in branding personnel. They decided to use the English word because there was nothing to define it. Trust Quebec to always come up with something that is the French equivalent of it. So now we have it. So is this term used more often in Quebec? And if you want to show up, you should use a French term. Yes. If you were in France, you would still use the English one. So we are teaching machines. I mean, Google faces so many new words every day. Inclusive writing for them on paper is easy to get. They get it. They, they really do. My... My problem is that they also do get human input and they do have a corpus of content that is not changing as fast as it should to reflect societal changes. So when you use inclusive writing, yeah, you absolutely impact search results. Yeah, you, you absolutely are a signal by yourself that, hey, something is happening here. And also this means that, um, the how can I say that? So you are impact. Are you impacting differently when you write for a website that is strong? Let's say, 
like for instance, the point Median is used on the national um, TV RTS websites for the information, but not in all articles. So let's say that, do you have a stronger impact if you write for a website that has yes. stronger writing? Yes, you do. In, but this is why I keep harping on the jobs. Remember EAT, expertise, authority, trustworthiness? Well, they, they are considering um, job postings, for example, as your money or life topics, really important topics to someone's happiness. That's why I'm going like, if you have one thing to change, at least it's in the hiring practices to make things more accessible. Do I use inclusive writing in everything that I do? No, no, because it's a brand new practice, because it scrambles my brain sometimes, because sometimes I can't do it. Do I make an effort to include it more and more? Yes. Have I flirted around, and I've done this, and I have made genuinely some, some gentlemen super angry by showing up in a class and teaching it as if I were talking to all women in the room. Not saying ladies or anything, but all my copy was oriented toward the feminine. And they're like, you're teaching men as well. You're excluding us. And I'm like, but your letter is still in there. Mine wasn't. That's why I added it. But they were just irrationally angry about this. I'm like, that was an interesting experience. I don't feel like dealing with that anger anymore, but now I have learned something. So I'm not perfect either. Like I'm trying my best here. And sometimes I even give up the fight and like, I know that if I want to rank for a brand new website on certain topics, I'm going to have to go with the masculine. Like it's, it's something that I discuss with people and I'm being very vulnerable and honest. I don't know either what fits. Sometimes it depends. And that's, what's maddening about this because it shouldn't be this complicated. It shouldn't be between me hesitating to be an expert or a specialist. Like it shouldn't be, you shouldn't curtail your visibility just to make a point. So it, it's, it's, this is why the way I would advise going about inclusive writing is to at least think about it. Just at least think it can change in a job posting, even if you're stuck with an H1 that is masculine, at least making the job more inclusive by adding some of, some of the feminine terms, um, making sure, for example, there's little things that are more inclusive, but, um, <clears throat> Recruiters that ask for like five years of experience in a programming language that has existed for three, don't do that. Like that doesn't help. So it's not just gender. It's also socioeconomic status. It's culture norms, etc. But on the gender end, there's different levels. And since the higher and the best practice level like the one that is ideal has not been solidified yet the way i would say it is if you are in a conservative company do your best with the overall corpus of the content you're producing even if you can't come close to the point medium and if you are in an industry where you know you have power and you know you can wield this and still rank well then make that choice to optimize for this you were sending a strong signal that this needs to be considered um last thing about this and then i can move on to another question i see more and more um gender uh neutral like inclusive writing when it comes to job offers they rank just fine like ranking jobs is a whole different topic a whole different presentation a whole different mood but they do show up like in the theory does come through in practice in specific cases where Google like was, has been able to easily adjust the day to day for us humans who are not necessarily looking for a job and looking to present ourselves online. That's much harder, but the job side, they go for it. Like inclusive writing is understood and does show up. But even because more and more people do it. Because, yes. uh, for example, in German, like uh, uh, there was the question of Valerie and uh, this discussion before, I, I, I work for a platform, then uh, then do this kind of thing. And they always will, uh, use the malware, but uh, there is always a dash or something to make in feminine. So more and more people will try to go in that direction. And so, I just... I wanted to bring back some visibility to something uh, someone had said in the chat that a, a horrible example in German, but it, it makes sense, is that yeah, you have the same 
German issue and then you have Google Maps showing. So even for local SEO, this impacts you. And then there's the example of certain jobs that are just so stereotypically assigned to females like nurses or beauticians that, well, the female version will always have a higher search volume than the male because you literally expect a woman to do this job, no one else. And that's also something else that I'd like to bring up. Like men are excluded from certain professions by default. Like being a male model, apparently not as in high demand socially, a beautician, which sucks because I know quite a few. <laughs> so it's, it's, it goes both ways. Huh? It's not just women who have issues. Like it's a cultural issue, inclusivity. It's a whole spectrum. Okay. Anybody else have questions? Anybody else want to complain? Because we can complain a lot. Like, <laughs> we're, we're good at this. So uh, you can use ask a question or you can use directly the, the chat. Eh? Oh, female football industry is going through the same struggle. Yes, yes, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. So, uh, not a question, but a remark regarding <laughs> Academie Francaise. 90% <laughs> old white males, I agree. And I just wanted to say something because I'm from the generation that saw one person being welcomed by the Academie Francaise and being embraced. It was like the one token black rapper in France, MC Solar, who was just so good and like so academic that they just could not reject him but they really try to reject everything else. Like it was really a token move. Like l'Académie Française is um, what I had in mind when I said that uses of the French language had just calcified and like just got like the dinosaurs. I mean, just became a fossil. And I'm having traveled to different places that speak French. I don't understand this whole deal. Like I don't, you're not, every, every country that speaks French is pretending to save the French language. And I'm like, can we just build it further instead of saving it? This, this is not an art. This is not a dinosaur fossil we're trying to put together here. This is this is an ongoing social project. It's not dead. <laughs> so, yeah, Elodie, I agree with you. <laughs> I think what I, what I have seen in the French language is that you have the French from France, and this is like really old school with old words i think in switzerland we can uh, in the middle between sweet be between france and quebec like if you want to go see really epicent examples and really good inclusion go to site web that are quebecois because you will find much more examples than like french french websites yes and i think what we do often here um, in Switzerland is that we often use like copywriter instead of redactor, red, redactrice. So, which means that we include more and more um, English words instead of like trying with French sometimes, which is good or sad, I don't know. But it's, it's an alternative that I have seen very often. Also, because we also have German expression, so I suppose we are kind of well, okay with mixing languages or th this is where i have to poke fun of where i live because i get told a lot as a, a french from france uh you french people use too much english we oui, quebecois <laughs> we use we use uh more french than you and then the person will say like je vais parquer mon char pour aller la game the hockey and i'm like all those words, all those words, we actually have them in French and it's called like, you don't park your car, you stationate the car and you don't go to a game, you know, like you go to a match. Oh, that I, that is actually English too. So it's, uh, that's why I said it's a bit ironic. We all think we're saving whatever language we're in, but no, it's just the uses change. Like that's, that's how a language lives and breathes. And, and I don't think English is a solution to everything. But um, I do know that like French is much harder to make um, to, when it comes to content, it's harder to create inclusive language with French because it's so like a tea kettle is feminine, a tea bag is masculine. Like this makes no sense. You're trying to make sense in a world that doesn't. But um, 
Quebec has had a huge push for inclusive language. Like they really do have guidelines. They help you get started, etc. I really, really like it. Um, I, I just see that Elodie has included a resource as well. And um, so I, I just is asking like, are women interested in different things? No, that that's the problem. Not every man is interested in cooking. Do we have famous chefs? Yes. Do we have dads everywhere pretending during the pandemic that they are TV chefs? Yes. So it's. I don't think it should be gendered this way. It should be a question of, you're a human being. You may have a statistical tendency to prefer this as a human because this, this, this. But it doesn't mean that you should be cut off. And that's my problem. Like, I get cut off from visibility for my job. It. Am I more interested in SEO or less interested in SEO than my partner who is a man doing the same job? I, let's not ask that question. That doesn't make sense in my world. That's, I, 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 I'm confused. And that's, that's what I mean. Like it's super easy to go into, well, women are like this, men are like this. And sure, but what about the folks in between? What about, you know, um, being unconventional and still being the gender that you are? So, okay, well, Lina has to leave. Bye, Lina. Hello Bye. from Madrid. <laughs> And um, also, I have an input. If you want to uh, convince your clients, I found that a really, um, a really good place to start. Personally, I use as much as possible epicent terms, such as la direction au lieu in instead of les membres de la direction, which makes it very easy then to do the accord you know in the text in le personnel instead of les employés and this type of thing so i do this per default and then in the process of writing i ask and what about language inclusive here are your options which ones you want me to take point médian tiré and double and if you ask this without judgment it's makes them think but you really have to ask this without judgment and not push them but just put it on the table as is your role as an expert to provide advice so you just put it on the table give it to the project manager and ask her and then they have to take a position and maybe it's the first time they have to actually take a position maybe it never came up before so i think that's that's a good start at least at some points they have taken that that decision and they can always reverse and they know they have options and also what helps is to uh, do print screen of famous companies like anytime i do i see something in a famous website i take a print screen and then you can say oh you don't want inclusive language but have you seen this bank like you are a bank too and this bank is doing it so maybe you want to do it too so yeah i um i see that valerie has also recommended uh okay so this is where like i'm 30 percent fluent in duolingo german so basically i can order food <laughs> that's it and say my enemy sleeps but um yes i the activity is actually it does apply so yes um this is what I call the little hustle that you described as well, uh, Isalin, that you make a conscious choice in the way you express yourself. So when you speak a language, there's always different shortcuts or different roundabout ways of explaining yourself. And you can choose epicene, you can go for the activity. I mean, the activity itself, it can be feminine, it can be masculine, you don't care, it's the activity, it's not a human being, let's go. Like, we can, we can get around this. So... I, I think this is a really smart way to do it. And the more I reflect on it, the more I think that, for example, using epicene terms or focusing on people do versus the title can also send really positive messages to the search engine going, well, this epi epicene term is trending. Okay, this is how we can more define ourselves. Instead of having to choose inclusive writing, we can default to some terms and make them more popular, period. That's it, redefining the trends not how the search engine operates but how we as humans choose to operate and i sincerely apologize that i'm going to have to disappear because it's noon yep. here and things happen <laughs> anyway it's seven o'clock so <laughs> thank you so much for joining miriam i, I think that it was quite interesting everybody was happy 
Yeah. Now, stay like a few more minutes. At least you will have your thank you now because everybody is happy. <laughs> Merci Myriam, merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Temps. Thank you so much. Okay. Que ça nous See you. See Bye. Bye bye.